In Elm, a signal is a value that changes over time. Now, the first time I heard that, it felt really abstract. I think the best way to learn signals is by seeing them in action. So let's look at a few examples to get a feel for what they are. We're gonna start by looking at some documentation. I'm over here on package.elm-lang.org and we're just gonna click on core libraries. And we're gonna start with a mouse signal. So we're gonna go down to the mouse module and click on it. And then we see at the top here, we have three signals for position. We've got an X signal, it's a signal event. So you see that type signal and then int. We've got a Y signal, it's also a signal event that's representing the current Y coordinate of the mouse. And then we also have the position signal. It's a signal of two ints as a tuple here. So those represent the X and the Y position. So let's go ahead and give those a try. In my editor here, I've opened up the signalexamples.elm file, which you'll find in the initial code directory. And it just imports some modules we'll be using in this section. And then we have a main definition down here that we're gonna fill out. Let's start by displaying the mouse X position. We can use the show function that's defined in the graphics.element module we have imported above there, and it just takes any value, converts it to a textual representation, and then returns an element that can be displayed in the browser. So we'll use show and we'll pass it mouse.x. That's the name of the signal in the mouse module. Save that away. And then over here, I've got the Elm reactor running in that initial code directory. And if you fire up the Elm reactor in that directory, you can go to localhost colon 8000 and it'll list all the files in the directory. So then if we go down and we look at signal examples and click it, it'll go ahead and run that file. But when it runs, we just see this signal word inside of these angle brackets here. What we really wanna see is the values that are on that signal. Remember I said that a signal is a value that changes over time. So how can we see those changing values? Well, to do that, we need to apply this show function to the signal. And we do that by using a function on the signal module. I'm gonna take the signal module. Signal is imported by default, but it's for qualified use, so we have to say signal dot, and then I'm gonna use the function called map. Now, we'll look at map in more detail in the next section. For now, it just gives us an easy way to see the signal values in the browser. What's gonna happen is it's gonna call the show function for each value in that mouse.x signal. So if we save that away, back over here, if we reload, well, now it shows zero. And if we start to move the mouse around, then that number changes. So on the left-hand side, it's around zero. And as we move over to the right, the number increases. So it's tracking the position, the X position in this case, of our mouse as we move that around and dynamically updating the browser to show that position. So the value that changes over time is the X position of the mouse. Now, we know that mouse also has a Y signal, but you can pretty much guess what that does. More interestingly is the mouse position signal. So let's come back over here. I'll keep this line just so we can compare what we did. I'll just duplicate it here and I'll comment that out and then we just do that with a double dash like that. And then over here, instead of using the X signal, we wanna use the position signal. Now if we refresh over here, we get a tuple and it's changing, giving us the X and the Y position of the mouse as that tuple. So the value that changes over time is the tuple of X, Y coordinates. Here's a way to visualize the mouse.position signal as it changes over time. A signal always has a value. The initial value of the mouse.position signal is 0, 0. As we move the mouse, we get a new value on the signal representing the mouse position. If we stop moving the mouse, the signal doesn't change. It's frozen in time until we move the mouse. So at any given point in time, the signal has a value, and the last value is always the current mouse position. Now suppose we want to track changes to the browser window dimension. Well, I'm going to duplicate this again, and then we'll comment this one out just so we can compare. Come down over here, and on the window module, there's a dimension signal. Save that away, back over here, reload. Well, now we've got the dimension. It's static right now because I'm not changing the window size, but if I come down and grab a corner here, we see that that starts to change. There's the width, or actually there's the width, and then we've got the height changing like that. So we've got a tuple of values there representing the width and the height of the window. So in this case, the value that changes over time is the width and the height tuple there. So the window dimension signal starts off as a tuple of the current width and height. We get a new value on the signal every time we resize the window. And the last value is the current window dimensions. Or maybe we're designing a game and we need to know when one of the arrow keys is pressed. Well, no surprise, there's a signal for that too. 
We'll duplicate this line and just comment it out so we can compare. And then down here, we're gonna show the keyboard module has an arrow signal. Save that away over in the browser, give a refresh there. And now we see we've got a record. Record has an X field and also a Y field. And the X indicates if the left or right arrow is pressed and the Y indicates if the up or down arrow is pressed. So if I press the left arrow, then X goes to negative one. If I go to right, it goes to one. If I go up, Y goes to one. If I go down, Y goes to negative one. So the arrow signal is a signal of records indicating which arrow keys are pressed. The signal starts off as X being zero and Y being zero. Then every time we hit an arrow key, we get a new value on the signal. Pressing the right arrow gives us a record with the X field having a value of one. When we release the arrow key, we get a new record with both X and Y having zero values again. So when we press and release, we actually get two signal values. Pressing and releasing the left, up, and down arrows follows the same pattern, changing the X and Y values accordingly. Finally, let's say that we need a one second ticker, a signal that gets a new value on a regular interval, one second in this case. Well, the time module has useful functions for working with time and also has some signals. We wanna value every second, so over here, we're gonna use the time module. It has a function called every, actually that's a signal, and it takes an argument, this is the number of milliseconds it should tick on, so we could give it 1,000, but to be more expressive, it actually has some constants, so we can say time.second, and that'll tick every second. Notice I put these in parentheses because that takes an argument, and we need a sub-expression there to pass to show. All right, we save that away, give a refresh over here. Well, now we've got a one-second ticker. It starts with the number of milliseconds since epoch, and then it's just ticking every second. You see that number update. So we've seen some examples of what it means for a signal to be a value that changes over time. Up next, we'll look at how to react to these changing values.